You have to look to the future with optimism instead of negative ideas. Take the good and the bad and face it head on. Hi, I'm Linda Watson Call. I'm so glad you could join me for today's episode of Dragonfly Soup. And if you're enjoying these episodes, please show your support of this program by clicking like right now. And if you think this episode would be of value to someone else, please share it. Let's get the message out. Well, a big shout out this week to Dory. You know, you really inspired me by showing how you are changing the way you're doing what you love. Thanks for the share. I think the truth of who we really are came out this week. I heard from some of you who felt you were cheated, and I agree you were cheated of some of the activities you were supposed to do. Others felt helpless. They knew why we were being told to stay home, but wondered out loud what else they could do to help the situation. And some felt grieved because they felt like their dreams had been shattered. A few, though, felt optimistic. You know, not that Pollyanna optimism, but with the optimism that things may be different and it will all work out in the end. We are still working through the stages of grief that I spoke about last week. Even that last optimistic group is probably moving in and out of grief. But that group is starting to get their balance and understanding that even though they can't move forward right now, they can still look forward. And I call that balance. Because when you don't have balance, you're more concerned about not making it than you are with what you will do in the future. And if you're out of balance, you aren't sure of what you can or will do. So, it's really balance that we're looking for and aiming for more than anything else. We all know things happen in cycles. How many times did two or three unexpected emergencies happen to you and you looked up and asked, what next? And then, almost miraculously, everything turned around. Everything was good. Right now, many of us feel that uncertainty about the future. Heck, some of us wonder if we'll ever see toilet paper in the supermarket again. But this much I know. If we don't focus on the positive possibilities, we will get engulfed in all the negatives. No, we won't be going on an Easter egg hunt with our friends and family this year. But we will celebrate it in a new, different, and maybe even a more creative way. Yes, it's uncertain if we'll be returning to school, but most of us still have opportunities to learn through online classes. Some of our teachers are using Google Hangout to connect with their students. And no, there will not be any Olympics or other sports this year, but we can find other venues of entertainment right in our home. This I do know. If we are not prepared for the tomorrow that will come, the tomorrow that will allow us to start returning to some of the activities that we enjoy, then when that day comes, we will feel again anxious, confused, and helpless because we spent all of our time focused on being stuck. Goldie Hawn, actress, producer, singer, and always a comedian in my mind, said, you have to look to the future with optimism instead of negative ideas. Take the good and the bad and face it head on. And that's the hard part, facing it head on, because we're not sure what that future will look like. So what can we do? Many of us feel that no matter what we do, we're not going to be going very far. Yeah, most of us can't even leave our house. But we are all still capable of dreaming, planning, and then doing something. Many of us have more than one skill that we can fall back on. And so many of us, given the time, can come up with alternative ways to do the things we love. One of the teachers I know posted on Facebook recently that all this feels so surreal. She was able to go back to the classroom and get some of the things she felt she would need and was saddened by the silence in the hallways. Most of our teachers use Google Classroom during the normal school year. 
Now they're using Google Hangout to connect with their students. Today, her post was very upbeat. Why? Because she couldn't wait to be with her students again using Google Hangout. That's the planning I was talking about. That's the looking for possibilities despite what's going on. Some will take longer, but this is the time to plan, to look at your goals and prepare for what you can do once you'll be able to do. If you were thinking about changing jobs, but needed to take a few courses, or you needed to take some courses before starting college, this might be a good time to do it. I bet those courses can be taken online, and some of the schools have reduced their costs or made the courses free during this time. That could be a win-win for you. Another one of my friends opened up a Facebook group for aspiring writers, and she's written several books and has coached some writers as well. She puts out a thought starter, like, you were accidentally locked in this small one night. And then the group is given the task of writing a short story about what happened and then posting it to the group for critiquing. This is an awesome opportunity to really dive into writing and having your work critiqued. The members of this group will find out if they have what it takes to write a book, and they will also receive guidance on how to improve. And that is all for free. And then there was this couple who were supposed to get married. They didn't have an exotic wedding planned, but they had a minister, the hall, and everything else lined up and ready to go. And then shelter in place went into effect. We were told that we couldn't have any gatherings with more than 10 people. They were able to work everything out with the hall and the other businesses that were involved to plan for a future date, but they really didn't want to wait to get married. They did have their minister, so the three of them, plus the best man and maid of honor, met in a park for a wedding ceremony. They'll have the celebration in the hall with all the trimmings later. In the midst of everything, they found a creative way to achieve their goal. We may have to stay home, but we don't have to stop living. We can plan and dream for the future. Instead of asking, when will it be here so we can, we need to say when it will be here, we can. So what about you? Let me know in the comments below or a message how you are dreaming, planning, or maybe even revising your goals so that you will be ready when the crisis is over. And if you missed my very first episode, Goal 2019, the link is up here. Be sure to click like for this week's episode, and while you're at it, share it with your friends. You might also want to check out our gift shop where you can purchase items like Dragonfly Soup t-shirts, hoodies, or other gifts. The link is below. You can also show support of this program by clicking the support link. Any contribution to help the series will be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next week, right here on Dragonfly Soup. Here's to our transformation and our best year ever.